Well, today, the Senate held a hearing to address what the U.S. views as worldwide threats. From the rising power of China to cyber war concerns to Iran's nuclear program, the U.S. is finding much to fear these days. It was once al-Qaeda considered to be America's top threat, but today it seems Iran is what scares the U.S. the most. This despite Iran and even top U.S. military leaders coming out and saying the country is not building a nuclear bomb. So what is behind all this fear-mongering going on today? Well, Ray McGovern, former CIA analyst, joins me now. Welcome to the show, Thank Ray. You very much. Um, so the number one fear in the U.S. today seems to be Iran. Um, you know, from our government leaders to the GOP presidential candidates, we're seeing these debates. It's almost like a competition of who can be <laughs> tougher against Iran. Um, so, I mean, do you think that these fears are justified? They're not. It's a synthetic stoking of fear. And you use the word, word synthetic, yeah, meaning very, um, they're made up, elaborate. It's on, manufactured. On that. If you look at the polls, 70% of the American people believe that Iran already has a nuclear weapon. That's exactly the same percentage of people in 2002 who were persuaded by what I call the fawning corporate media to believe that Saddam Hussein was working on a nuclear weapon. It's bizarre. What do the defense ministers of America and Israel say? They say, as P Panetta asked himself on Face the Nation, uh, are the Iranians working on a nuclear weapon? No. What does Ehud Barak say in Israel, his counter counterpart? He says, uh, you know, if the uh, Iranians were working on a nuclear weapon, they would have to kick out the UN inspectors. We would know that, and they don't want that at all. They are not working on a nuclear weapon. They have not yet decided to do so. So the facts are that the two defense ministers, both intelligence agents, and say, the way they say it is they have not yet decided to do a nu nuclear weapon. Well, that means that they're, I mean, simple English means they're not working on a nuclear weapon. Now, uh, uh, Clapper, uh, General, or former General Clapper, who's the head of national intelligence, and Petraeus, they, they almost wore out the subjunctive mood, you know. It was always, if the Iranians decide to go for a nuclear weapon, if they choose to do so, you know, it's, it's like going to war in the subjunctive mood, and that's precisely what I was criticized for, for saying uh, we, we did 10 years, it's exactly 10 years ago before Iraq, going to war on an if, on a contrived synthetic if. I've never seen the like of it. Now, now, you said earlier, 70% of Americans believe Iran currently has already has a, a nuclear, nuclear bomb. I mean, yeah. what could be behind that, that misconception? Well, I mean, something you know, that is totally not factual. Really good question. You have to take five steps back and say, what is this all about? Is this about a nuclear capability in Iran? No. You know what it's about? It's about regime change. We haven't changed the regime in Tehran in 59 years. Don't you think it's about time that we change the regime in Tehran? The Israelis lost big time when we went into Iraq because the big beneficiary of our escapade in Iraq was Iran. Now they've lost Egypt to the south, they've lost Turkey to the north. They want regime change in Tehran. Unfortunately, their influence among U.S. policymakers is so strong that they constructed this imaginary threat about this nuclear weapon so that they can do sanctions, so that they can do $400 million worth of, of covert action in, in Iran uh, to perhaps elicit a reaction from Iran where they can zap them with military means. That's what the name of the game is, and people should realize that because, you know, it's very, very close to the kind of situation that happened exactly 10 years ago. It's almost bizarre. Deja vu all over again. This time it's not Iraq. This time it's Iran. And Israel is a big decision maker here. Now, what was really interesting is Diane Feinstein, who's a very pro-Israel person, admitted that she had been meeting this over the weekend with the head of Mossad, the Israeli CIA. So did Petraeus. Well, what were they talking about? The Iranian threat. Well, you know, why don't they talk to the Iranians about the Iranian threat? The Iranians are willing. You know, it's really, really, really uh, unconscionable the way the Americans are being rallied around a new war 
with Iran. I just got to stop. Well, I want to ask you, if the motivation is regime change, um, who stands to benefit for, from such a change? Israel does. You know, Iran is the sole uh, remaining uh, <laughs> superpower. We're the sole remaining superpower. They're a regional power in the Middle East. They have a, a, a good-sized uh, uh, army, navy, and so forth. Now, um, Israel doesn't want to have to compete with that. And so they resort to all kinds of hyperbole. Here, here's, a, uh, here's Haaretz, the uh, relatively progressive Israel newspaper, uh, saying that President Shimon Peres said today that Iran is not only seeking regional, but, quote, even global hegemony. Iran wants to be king of the world. You know, that's hyperbole on steroids. We ought to recognize it as that. We ought to put it in perspective. If the, the Israelis want us to zap the Iranians to get rid of the regime that, that's in power, the American people should know that before they send their sons and their daughters into war with Iran. Absolutely. Uh, Americans should be as formed, informed as possible before making such a big decision as going to war. Uh, you know, we have heard from high-level military leaders, even here in the U.S., that Iran does, does not have a, a nuclear weapon. Um, so why don't we hear more talk about this? Well, uh, I think it has to do with who controls the media. The media is controlled by what President Eisenhower called the... Uh, uh, complex, the military industrial complex, and they make big money out of wars. It's also dominated by pro-Israeli uh, people. I mean, look at uh, who, does, who does all these shows. Look at the New York Times. They wouldn't even, the New York Times or the Washington Post wouldn't even report some of the things that Panetta and Ehud Barak said. So there are great uh, forces in this country that, uh, and particularly in a political year, which make me fear. Um, that Netanyahu, who really has the initiative here, don't think for a second that Obama has the initiative. Netanyahu has the initiative. He thinks that our president will just kind of sit back and say, oh, darn, if they attack Iran and we get involved in that. If he thinks that, he's going to do it. And what I would appeal for is an overt, outspoken statement by the president of the United States saying, look, Ehud, look Ehud Barak and Bibi Netanyahu, if you do this, don't count on us to pick up the, the pieces because there are going to be a lot of pieces. Even a previous Mossad director in Israel has warned that this could be the end of the state of Israel, and I think that could be. Right. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show and weighing in on this uh, interesting perspective. That was former CIA analyst Ray McGovern.